Welcome back to the channel and another video. In this video, we will be looking at rate of reaction. But at this level, we will go into much more details and look at different areas that has to do with rate of reaction. So the first thing I will introduce you to is orders of reaction and our rate equation all right are sometimes called rate law all right so before you would have accustomed to the factors that affect rate of reaction we would have also learned that as the concentration of the reactants increase that the rate of reaction will also increase but you will come to realize that the concentration it affects the rate of a reaction in different ways right so the order of reaction right will tell us how the reactant affect the rate of reaction right so a particular reactant if you increase its concentration the rate can increase by a certain factor or it, or it can stay the same, right? So the first thing is, we're going to look at the different orders of reaction and what they mean. And next thing, to, de to determine the order of a reaction, we can only do it experimentally. So let's come up with a hypothetical reaction A to produce B. Right? All right. So. Here's an example of a table now, right, where we do a series of experiments to see how the rate is affected by varying the concentration. So I also change the reaction. I'm now using two reactants so we can compare how each of the reactants is going to affect the rate. So when you get a table like this, you will have to look at the table and determine the order of the reaction. So the first thing you will have to do, you will find, so we are going to look at how A affects the rate. So we want to find out the order of reaction with respect to A. So remember the order of reaction is basically a re representation of how the rate of how the concentration of a particular reactant affect the rate. So once you know the order, you will know how the rate will be affected. So the first thing you will do, if you want to know how the concentration of A affects the rate, and here the capital M, at this level, once you see a capital M, it means moles per dm cube. All right, so it's shortened for moles per dm cube. So I want to know the order of reaction with respect to A. So we need to see how A affects the rate. So the first thing, look for two experiments where the concentration of A changes. So the first experiment, the concentration was two moles per dm cube. The second experiment, it's also two moles per dm cube. So we cannot look at the rate of reaction for the first two experiments to determine how A affects the rate. Because the concentration of A for the first two experiments is constant. For the third experiment, the concentration of A is now four. So for experiment three, the concentration of A has been changed. Now, 
You can compare experiments 1 and 3 or experiments 2 and 3. All right? So you don't compare the experiments like in order where it has to be 1 or 2 or 2 or 3. It can be 1 and 4, 2 and 4, 1 and 3. All right? But there are rules. So the first thing we need to do is choose two experiments where the concentration varies. So for experiment one, it was two. For experiment two, it was also two. So we cannot compare the first two experiments. When you get to experiment three, it is now four. So if you compare experiments one and three, the concentration of A is not the same. If you compare experiments two and three, it's also not the same. All right? When I get to experiment four, the concentration is eight. So based on the first requirement, we choose two experiments that the concentration of A must be varied. If you look at experiments one and three, the concentration is two and four. If we look at experiments two and three, the concentration is two and four. And if we look at experiments one and four, the concentration is two and eight. If we look at experiments three and four, the concentration is 4 and 8. So, if you can see, all of these comparisons, the concentration of A varies. Right? No. So, any of, based on the first criteria I gave you, you could compare any of these two experiments. Now, the second criteria it's going to eliminate some of these experiments. So the first criteria, just compare two experiments where the concentration of A varies. So let's do experiments one and two. The concentration was two and two. So automatically, this experiment, you could not compare these, right? because they did not meet the criteria. Now the second criteria, the experiments that you are comparing for compound A, those same two experiments, B must be constant. So let's look. For experiments one and three, the concentration of A varies, but if you come across to B, the concentration of B also varies. So the second criteria, when the concentration of A must vary, but the concentration of B for those two experiments must stay constant. Now, when we look at B, we can see that the concentration of B also changes. All right? It is 0 0.5 and 1. Now, we cannot know. Remember now, what we are trying to do is find out how A affects the rate by itself. So if you choose two experiments where both the both of the reactants concentrations have been changed, how are you going to know which reactant is affecting the rate when you have changed both of their concentration? Right? So you cannot do that. So experiments one and three, even though you change the concentration of A, you cannot use it because for experiments 1 and 3, the concentration of B is not the same. If you look at experiments 2 and 3 now, we know that the concentration of A is changed. So let's look at it. Experiments 2 and 3, the concentration of B is the same. So you can see that experiments 2 and 3 meets both of our criteria. The concentration of A changes and the concentration of B stays the same. 
So this experiment can be used to assess how the concentration of A affects the rate. Let's look at experiment one and four. Experiment one and four. A is 2, 8, and B is 0.5 and 2. So you should be able to tell if 1 and 4 can be used. All right? If your answer is yes, it is incorrect. Because, again, the concentration of B is not the same. So you cannot use experiments 1 and 4. For experiments 3 and 4, B, again, is changed, all right? So it cannot use. So our experiment that we are going to use to determine how A affects the rate is experiments two and three. So, for the concentration of A, we are using experiments 2 and 3. Now, we also need to know how the concentration of B affects the rate. So, the same principle is going to apply. Look for two experiments where you change the concentration of B, but the concentration of A stays the same. So, you can pause the video and make an attempt, all right? So, if we look at the experiments one and two, the concentration of B is 0 0.5 and one, all right? For experiments one and two. And if you notice, the concentration of A is constant. So we change the concentration of B while keeping A constant. So experiments one and two meets our criteria. The concentration of A is constant and the concentration of B changes. Remember now, we want to see how the concentration of B affects the rate. So we have to change the concentration of B while keeping A constant. So experiments one and two can work. Concentration of B, experiment one and two. So now, what we are going to do now, let's start with A. For experiments two and three, come over to the rate, right? And the unit for rate is moles per dm cube per second. So for experiment two, the rate was 10. And for experiment three, the rate was 40. All right. For experiment 2, it was 10. And for experiment 3, it was 40. So we want to see when we change the concentration of A, how does that influence the rate? Now, if you divide the bigger rate by the smaller one, right, you will get 4. So, what did we do to the concentration of A? You move it from 2 to 4, right? Let me just... So, for the concentration of A, the latest experiment here, it was 4, and then before that it was 2. So we double the rate of the reaction. Obviously, you could work out this by looking at the 4 over 2 is 2. But it's the principle because if you get some smaller numbers, like decimals, you just do the same thing, right? Divide. So. 4 divided by 2, we end up with 2. So we know that we have doubled our concentration of A. For the rate, for 
40 divided by 10 and we get 4. When we increase, when we double the concentration of A, the rate went up 4 times. Alright? This right here is a specific scenario. When you double the concentration of A, three things can happen. Alright? Because for this, we are looking at three orders of reaction. Alright? So, in any scenario, three things are going to happen. When you change the concentration of A, the rate can be unaffected. So, that means that when we change the concentration of A, Remember now, we are just focusing on these two experiments. Ignore the others. The concentration could have, uh, sorry, the rate could have also stayed at 10. What that would have been, even though you have changed the concentration of A, the rate is unaffected. That means the concentration of A does not affect the rate. And so the order of reaction in which the concentration of a reactant does not affect the rate that is said to be a zero order reaction so that's the first order zero order All right so if you were assessing it you change the concentration of a but the rate was the same for both experiments, then it means that the concentration of A is not affecting the rate. That is zero order. Concentration does not affect rate. Now, a next scenario. If you double the concentration of A, the rate can also double. Right? move from 10 to 20 the rate doubles so if you double the concentration of A and the rate doubles right that means the rate is doing or is increasing by the same amount that the rate is increasing sorry the concentration so doubling the concentration doubles the rate that reaction is a first order reaction All right so for this one we say that the rate of reaction is proportional to the concentration double the concentration the rate doubles so whatever you happens to the concentration the rate is influenced in the same manner let me give you an example Right. Before we finish with this one, let's say the concentration of A was 6. Right. Remember, in this case, 6 divided by 2, you would end up with 3. So it means that going from experiments 2 to 3, the concentration of A was tripled. If it is a first order reaction, whatever you do, to the concentration the same thing must apply to the rate so the concentration went up three times that means the rate must go up three times as well so the concentration going from experiments two to three it went up three times two trees six that means the rate of reaction must also go up three times 10 times 3, 30. Alright? So for a first order reaction, the concentration and the rate changes the same way. So concentration goes up 3 times, rate goes up 3 times. In the previous example, concentration went up 2 times, that is when we had had 4, so the rate would have gone up two times, right? In which case, we would have 20. So if concentration goes up two times, right? The rate goes up two times. 
if concentration goes up three times, in which I get six, the rate goes up three times, and that's how you get 30. So for first order reaction, rate is proportional to concentration. Right? The next one now. This was 2, this was 4, and this was 20. Right? So, with double the concentration, we say that it may not affect the rate in which it would be 0. Next scenario, with double the concentration, the rate doubles. So, rate is proportional to concentration. That's first order. The next scenario, we saw that if we double the concentration, right, the rate does not go by 2, but it goes up by 4. Right? For this type of reaction, we describe it as second order reaction. So if you double the concentration, the rate of reaction will go four times right for this one so zero order rate is unaffected by concentration first order rate is proportional to the concentration and for second order we say that the rate is proportional to the square of the concentration students often kind of confuse with the second order so i'm going to show you how I'm going to show the examples for the second order. Right, I'm going to erase the table at this point. So, right, so our example here, when we when A was constant and we double the concentration of B, so B went up two times. And we saw that the rate went up two times. So the rate of so the rate of reaction is proportional to the concentration of B. That means it is first order with respect to B. For A, when we double the, the concentration, no, this was 40. This is supposed to be 40. Yes. For a, when the concentration went up two times, this went up four times. When that happens, that's second order. So, for this experiment, from it, we would conclude that the rate of reaction, it is first order with respect to A, and second order with respect to B. Now the next thing, once you determine the order of the reaction, we have to write a rate equation. The rate equation right, says rate is equal to K times the concentration of your reactant. In this case, it would be B. K is a constant. Right, so if you if we just ignore the constant for a second, you realize that the rate equation is basically giving us the relationship between the rate and the concentration, right? Because when it's second order, we have to put the number, so rate is equal to the concentration of A, right? But remember, A is second order. So we are going to put a number at the top to represent the order of the reaction. So rate would be Ka squared. Right? As we said, for second order, rate is proportional 
to the square of the concentration. For B, it was first order. So rate, let's put in back our K now. Rate is equal to K. KB1. Right? So for first order, rate is equal to KB. Because it's a 1, we don't need to put the 1 there. Right? So you can just write rate is equal to KB. And rate is equal to, let's put in the correct constant, rate is equal to Ka squared. Right? So you will get a table on most questions. You will get a table with your experiments. You are asked to determine the order of reaction with respect to each experiment. Not each experiment. With respect to each reactant. So it will be first order, okay? first order with respect to A, not second order with respect to A, and first order with respect to B. So possible questions, write the order with respect to each reactant. Right, the rate equation or the rate law with respect to each reactant, you may also be asked to, to write the overall rate equation. So the overall rate equation, it would be a combination of the two. So rate is equal to k a squared times b so this would be the rate equation all right our rate law rate is equal to k a squared b all right remember in the first order we don't have to put the one there good so that is rate the constant concentration of each reactant and this number that's the order so that's your rate equation rate equal k times concentration now the overall order of the reaction is just the sum of the individual order so it is second order with respect to a and first order with respect to b so the overall order is 3, right? So that's how we would get the orders of reaction and the rate equation. I'm going to put the next table on the board with the same thing and we try it. All right, this video is basically it. All right. I'm going to start here from this one, all right? And then make a next one, all right? And we work more examples, right? So this is the first part. I'm going to stop here and do a second part. If you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the comment section.